Welcome to Punts and Bunts, the podcast where we tackle all things football and baseball. I'm Jose, joined by my co-host, Robert. We're thrilled to have you with us today, so grab your team's favorite cap, settle in, and let's dive into today's sports chatter. All right, then, yeah, today we got two topics we're going to discuss. We're going to talk about the increase in pitcher injuries that has been a common topic lately in all of baseball, as well as the use of cricket technology in baseball. It sounds strange, but let's take a look at it. Let's take a dive into it. Let's go. So here we go, uh, starting right away here with uh, increase in pitcher injuries. It's been a common topic over the last uh, last two seasons, uh, pretty much since the uh, the start of the pitch clock in Major League Baseball. Uh, I've seen a lot of injuries uh, to a lot of big name pitchers. Um, I guess uh, Jose, what are your thoughts on that? What do you think could be the cause of these injuries? Do you think it's uh, pitch clock related? Do you think it's just harder throwing? What are you thinking? I don't think it has anything to to do with the pitch clock, and if it did. Um, I feel like there's it's too, it'd be too hard to prove that it's that. I've s- seen uh, clips of Tyler Glasnow from when they got rid of the sticky stuff at the very beginning, um, when he was talking about how he did never used anything other than the sunscreen, sweat, and rosin, but talking about how he would then have to squeeze harder on the baseball. Uh, and that added strain on the arm just to control the baseball a little bit more, uh, he thought was going to lead to more injuries. So I feel like maybe there could be a little bit of something there. Probably the batters won't like that. But um, that and, and just velocity. I mean, how, how important is it nowadays uh, for pitchers to throw hard? Uh, And not just to throw hard, but like there's guys that maybe 20 years ago with their body were not getting to the same velocity as guys are now because of places like driveline that that really get the most out of these guys' bodies. Maybe a guy just shouldn't be throwing 100 miles an hour right, with his frame, but these driveline guys are able to make it happen. It happens, they can do it for a year and a half, and then their arm blows off, and they made their money, right? Because that's what, mm-hmm. how you get paid now, but at the cost of their careers, right? Right. And and so, I mean, the reason I would go against the pitch clock, and here's the thing, I'm very anti-pitch clock. I did not like it coming in. I don't really care for it now, but I don't think it's the cause for this. I think you'd be seeing a lot more injuries, actually, if it were a result of the pitch clock. Because, I mean, the pitch clock's been going since 2015 in the minor leagues. So that being said, you're looking at a point to where uh, most of these guys who are coming in the league now, they that's all they've had. They've never pitched without it pretty much since they've had it, you know, 15, 16, 17. That's several years now where pitchers have been using the pitch clock and it's been throughout the minor league. So I don't really think it could be causing it directly. I think it could be uh, like what you said there with the adding the additional finger pressure on the balls as well as the um, – uh, as well as – the, just the harder throwing because you didn't have the people throwing nearly as hard as, bef- as before or you have people throwing harder than before. I apologize. Um, like, you know, guys like Justin Verlander, Garrett Cole, those guys, they never had to deal with the pitch clock until last year, maybe with the occasional rehab start or uh, some just pop down to the minors for, for whatever reason, but regularly they never had to. Um, yeah. Is it possible? Yes, certainly it could be a cause for injuries. There's no question, but is it, is there anything definitive that we can prove it is? No. Well, no. And, and like, I've, I've seen people liken it to like the concussion stuff in the NFL and there's something you can do in the NFL, right? Oh, you, you work on the helmets in mm-hmm. baseball with this, even if it's like literally the answer, which I feel like it is, is just that guys are trying to get the most out of their body. And I mean, you hear it a million times, especially growing up playing baseball that, Throwing a baseball is is not a natural motion, right? It's a big thing, like in in fast pitch softball, why they go underhand, right? Uh, it's it's more natural for the body to throw that way than it is this way, and not only is it unnatural, but now they're they're figuring out how to make it so that they're throwing something out of their hand at ninety five miles an hour, right? And that strain of doing that, like you almost used to never really hear about position players getting Tommy John and like Corey Seager just had it a couple years ago. 
Um, mm-hmm. Now it's not even just like a, a pitcher thing. Now it's like, oh, you play baseball. You throw hard. That's what gets the scouts, right? You want the shortstop, the O'Neill Cruz that's throwing missiles. What was it? 1-0 something? Yeah, it was like 106 or something. Ridiculous. 106 higher from ridiculous. shortstop? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's going to get you all the looks from the scouts. Mm-hmm. And soon, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised guys that throw that hard that consistently, even from the position players, having to get Tommy John at some point too. So, so let me ask you this, kind of building off that. How do you, how do you feel about younger kids like in high school and college opting to get uh, Tommy John surgery, even though they don't necessarily need it, just because you know you're less likely to have to have it again if you do have the surgery and there's been a handful of people who've opted to have it yeah i mean at the end of the day it's i guess like it's their body right and Mm -hmm. i would assume that kids are do that are doing this are kids that uh have a future in baseball and they know that they have a future in baseball it's not going to be like me who was like, guys, I need to get Tommy John (laughs) just so I don't have to get it later. Uh, You know, these are probably guys that are like probably ranked out of high school and stuff like that. You know, they have people advising them to do this. But even if they do, I mean, J-Mo on the Cubs, he's had it twice. Uh, Shohei just had it a couple years ago and now I I know that they said it wasn't actually Tommy John the second surgery that he had but it it was still had to do with the elbow and it was like some like enforcing something just to enforce it or something like that so it's like just because you had it once doesn't even mean that it'll save you from having it again exactly now I do I do agree with you like I mean they can make the choice whatever they want them and hopefully them and not their parents making the choice for them especially depending on the age they are um but I just feel it's almost it's almost too big of a risk because like what if that thir- surgery gets botched and all of a sudden there is no future in baseball, right? I yeah. mean, so I don't I, I don't agree at all with opting for a preventative surgery that isn't hundred percent going to be necessary. <laughs> um, but um, I do feel that. It, I, I do see that maybe if somebody really feels they need it or if they feel they've overstretched it and they just like, you know, want to get things tightened up in there and just get it done, go for it. I mean, uh, it's definitely a uh, definitely interesting. And uh, just for everybody out there, if you haven't, give the book uh, The Arm uh, a read. It's a really good read all about the surgery um, and the pictures you've gone through it. It's a really great read. So. Is that the same surgery that the kid got in the rookie of the year? Tommy John. <laughs> uh, no, uh, he did, I think I thought he just broke his arm. I he just oh yeah, his it was arm. just a broken arm. My bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> the tendons—they're too tight. Hand, hand, re, re, roll. So yeah, hopefully uh, something gets figured out with that. Um, you, you, yeah. you came up with the talk it, t- topic of the cricket tech and MLB. I'm not very familiar with cricket. We're punts and bunts. I don't know how familiar our listeners are with cricket. Um, I'm, I just know about the bowler. The bowler throws it at the ground, and then they try to protect the wickets, and then they run back and forth, and it's yeah, a circle. So, so yeah, the, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to get too in-depth on the rules of cricket because <laughs> most likely you don't care. Hey, if you do, shoot, shoot us a comment. Shoot, shoot us a DM. We'll, we'll talk about it more if you really want to hear about it. We'll study up on it. Just let us know. Um, I enjoy watching the sport. I do every now and again, especially when it is World Cup time. Um, but one thing that I brought up or that I saw when and brought up to Jose here when I was watching cricket was that they have this, uh, the stump mic, which is a mic that sits there with the wickets and essentially what it's used for co- most commonly was not originally, originally put in for this purpose. Um, it was later repurposed for it in about 07 for the world cup. Um, and that's for the, the mic to pick up whether a ball has been tipped or not. So what happens essentially is if the ball's been tipped, it, will depend on, you know, if the batter's out or if they get to go again or however, you know, how cricket works if you do. Um, And so they show, basically they show a reader, which they call the real-time snickometer, and they show the side-by-side of the frame-by-frame of the ball going, and then once the ball hits the bat or gets to the point of where it would hit the bat, you see something on the uh, the screen that shows an audible sound. So you can tell like it's a, it's a it's a tip. So like in baseball, how could you use that foul tips? The big one that I can think of is it was a non-reviewable play on opening night with uh, Jonah Hyam behind the plate. Ball was fouled. He's like, it was not fouled. <laughs> He's like, no, it wasn't. Uh, right. I'm sorry. The umpire was. Yeah. The umpire said no, right. it wasn't foul. And Jonah was like, yeah, it was. But 
that ultimately let a run score from second. Um, and it was non-reviewable and the Cubs got a run on it. Uh, but if, I mean, why is with the technology there, even with the video review, why is that not reviewable? I mean, it, it, if we have the technology and it's to better the game, let's use it. If they're using it in cricket and this mic has been embedded since 1970. Right. So it's been there for a long time. So the technology's there and it's been there. Um, so why not add it to, to baseball? I mean, it'll help with the, you know, the hit by pitches and, or foul balls. Like, I mean, you see all the time ball comes riding inside. It hits the handle, the knob of the bat. And at that, then it's like, is it a hit by pitch? Is it a foul ball or fair ball? Is it contact? Um, that meter should be able to tell that whether it's been, you know, the sound of a ball to a bat is drastically different than the sound of a ball to skin. Right. It also makes a lot of difference in how you feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think it could be cool to utilize this technology in baseball to, and, and the thing is it's, it's, it's quick too. It's not like some of these other reviews where they're sitting there for five minutes. Like, as you say, for he out um, right. this one, it's like, they just do frame by frame. It picks up on the mic. It's done. So you said it's on the wicket in cricket. Or where is it's it? on the it's on it's on the stump, which is on the, uh, on the which stump. is okay. Yeah. So which where is would the, it be uh, in baseball height. then, or where where would you propose? Um. So you could put it on the ump. Um. You could. I mean, you could even put it in with like a pitch like pitch com device somehow with the catcher, like on on the device that sits on like his knee pad or in his glove wherever he puts it, and it could pick that up. Or you could even possibly put it in the plate. Inside the plate. Yeah. Like I mean, I don't I don't know if they still do, but I know NASCAR used to have a camera in the. Uh, in the ground and you'd see that i think they called it the gopher cam or something <laughs> um in baseball you sometimes in like the fox broadcast i believe they have a, a sometimes oh, a second base yeah, yeah like during the world series especially or all-star games you know the fox broadcast yeah. honestly kind of like <laughs> one of the worst camera angles though. oh it's a terrible it's like, camera it's angle. always covered in crap <laughs> and I, th I think that's why they went away from it for the most part in nascar was you know all you saw was the undercarriage of cars like <laughs> you just like look up, oh okay so this is what it feels like to get run over by a car <laughs> oh, so i digress but uh um so yeah there's definitely places you could put it whether it be on the umps equipment or on the catcher's equipment or even on the plate um and i mean it, I think it could help, um, but I, I definitely think that something like that, regardless the play like the one we just described with the foul ball or swing and miss, that should be a reviewable play. I mean, sure. it's pretty evident. Like, if they review it, it's foul ball, everyone goes back, repitch, done. It's right. <laughs> yeah. So it's just something that I think that we really should look into as, as baseball. I mean, if the technology is there, let's use it. I mean, we went so long without even having any sort of review. I mean, Armando Galarraga lost a perfect game uh, because of uh, Jim Joyce's call at first base um, that should have honestly could have been overturned. It would have been overturned. There's no question. And it was pretty much known at that exact moment, even by Jim Joyce himself, that he made the wrong call. And if the technology is there, let's use it. That's what I'm going at there. So not to digress too far into replay, but just in general, if the technology is sure. there, let's use it. Well, perfect. So. Well, I'd just like to remind everybody that if you like this episode, please subscribe, uh, give us a like. You know, we're, we're still new at this, but any likes, any shares, any subscriptions really helps us with the algorithm. Uh, yeah. We're on all the socials, so all just uh, hit us up. Yeah, thank Sli you. Slide into our DMs. It's like you're sliding <laughs> into that second base camera. So <laughs> yeah, Cover up the second base camera with dirt. Sliding entire yep. DMs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you.